Welcome to Darshan America, folks. We come to you from Washington, D.C. My name is Ramesh Bhutani. And I'm Asta Verma. Almost from all cities around the country, Occupy Wall Street has been removed. You know, we've been there for a few months. They were trying to articulate a point, but I think one thing they were able to convey, that somehow rich are getting richer, and they are now paying fair share of their tax. And last week, or even this week, the Republicans and Democrats finally agreed, yeah, we need to raise some taxes on these rich people. I agree. I think, you know, they tapped into a sentiment that this country was feeling. We all said, you know, what is the specifics? What are they specifically yeah. after? Are they trying to pass a law? Are they trying to go after some legislation? And you never really got clarity around what it was, but it didn't matter because what they were really tapping into is a feeling that this whole nation has that we're somehow not getting the fair end of the deal. That's right. And you know, none of the political parties even took ownership of Including the Including the Tea Street. Party didn't go after it. Yeah, that's right. But folks, in all this hoopla, the actually people who are moving out to uh, impose taxes on the rich people are the states. The federal government may go after one million, but the states will go after 250,000 and above. It now, makes sense to some degree, I think, even though it seems harsh. Uh, these states are the ones that are required to balance their budgets, unlike the federal government, which is not required to balance its budget. So they are really feeling the crunch in a real way. A lot of these states are hurting. They're bankrupt. They've had to cut programs. Yep, that's right. And you know what? Even the unions did not take ownership of the Occupy Wall Street because most of the budget deficits that are around the country in most of the cities and states and the counties, it is the union pensions for the public employees. Somehow that has been the hardest thing this year to cut, cut, and cut. You know, they have done it in uh, New York State, California, every place else, but nowhere better than the state of Rhode Island. I know. Who would have thought? A tiny little state. You think about the size of Rhode Island versus New York or California, and you wouldn't expect that Rhode Island would have such severe pension issues, but they did. 1.05 million is their population. And this one lady, Gina Ramondo, she ran for the office of treasurer in Rhode Island. She's a rookie, one year in politics, <laughs> and she won everybody's heart. You know, it's very hard to uh, fight against unions. I mean, they fight dirty, they cry, and they never go away. If they lose it the first year, they'll come back. I mean, look at Wisconsin. But this young lady threw her... Uh, Perseverance. Which, yeah. yeah. That's the part of the story I really loved. If yeah. you read the article, which was in Time magazine, about her and what she was able to accomplish, it says, you know, she was very careful to avoid the colorful rhetoric that made Governor Chris Christie a YouTube sensation. So she didn't go after all the sound <laughs> yeah. bites. She basically said, I'm here to do a job, and she did it. She stubbornly guarded her independence from the Democratic Leviathans. She refused to fill out the National Education Association's surveys to get their endorsement. She basically yeah. said, I don't need your endorsement. I'm here to do That's a job. Right. And guess what? She did it. And, and, and <laughs> folks, I want to tell you, you need to watch out for her because she is then going to run for Rhode Island governorship and then she'll come to the national politics. But what she has done is really remarkable. She was able to cut out the pension, of course, not as deep as she wanted, but she was able to get as deep. And, of course, she also imposed 401k on all new employees for the government. And, and you know, of course, uh, some of the people remember back in the 70s, the retirement age in Rhode Island was 60. Yeah. And with the help of the union, that retirement age went to 50. Whereas the life expectancy went from 70 to 85. I mean, which state can survive when as much as 80% of your last salary that you were drawing, you get it in the pension? What's the use of working if you're getting all that money? And, and this is how the states went bankrupt. She realized this. That's the, that's the part of the story I also like, is that she's just a normal average citizen yeah. and said, look, the math is not adding up here. I can do something about this. She decided to run. Her parents said, you know, why are you getting involved it's in this? It's dirty. It's such, a, such a sleazy, dirty business, this whole government <laughs> politics stuff. But she was determined. And an average citizen, you can say, who just simply had the will to want to change things, got there 
and made change happen. That's and also, tremendously inspiring. And it's more inspiring is that at one time, she used to take the bus to go to school, and they were cutting out the bus routes. They were closing libraries because, you know, they had, they never looked at the pension side. They were always looking for the Programs. rest of the budget right. is short. So, uh, this is very, very encouraging. And at the same token, I must say that Newt Gingrich is looking better and better. <laughs> well, he's looking better and better in part because the other, uh, personality in the race, Herman Cain, suspended his campaign. He had no choice. Of course, all of us have seen the articles in the papers and in the news conferences. I think he had to do this. But the fact that he's now putting his endorsement uh, behind Newt Gingrich lends a little bit more oomph to Newt Gingrich and not to Romney, who just seems to be once again pale in comparison. Again, I don't know <laughs> what is on his mind. I mean, he's got the best management. He's got boots on the ground, and he has got the grassroots support. He's running on that, but right now he's trailing Newt Gingrich. And I want to tell you, Newt Gingrich is a known quantity. That's so the problem. You, no! <laughs> let me tell you, if, if you know an enemy and you understand the enemy, it's so much better than having a friend that you don't know how they're going to turn out. I guess you could make that argument, but yet there was an article in the Post that tried to tap into the sentiment for why it is that people really aren't connecting with Romney. Do you remember back when uh, it was George Bush versus John Kerry? Yes. And people asked the question, if you got stuck on the side of a ditch, who could you rely on would stop at the side of the road would help you? <laughs> and most people said George Bush. That's right. They did not say John Kerry, and that's where he lost that election. Well, the same thing it's happened here with Romney. Uh, people went through a series of questions about, you know, what, what do you think about Romney? If, if he were a member of your extended family, would you, know, ex you expect him to come for visits over Christmas? And people said, nah, he's a businessman. He'd be too busy. Or another one, which I thought was really, really funny, was if they asked if, uh, which one of the candidates could be a good character witness for yourself, yeah. Nobody picked Romney. They picked Michelle Bachman. They picked Ron Paul. They didn't pick Romney. They, <laughs> they said, did not pick Newt either, right? They didn't pick, <laughs> they didn't pick Newt either, either. But another one that I thought was very, very interesting was um, they thought that Romney was a safer and better choice than Newt Gingrich, but that they fully expected Romney to act rich and to be rich and not care about the common man's plight. But, you know, one of the things you have to believe, Newt went through it all. You know, back in the 90s, you remember when they shut down the government? He went through that experience. He knows how to handle that now, I hope. And number two, he's the one who did contract with America. And really, at that time, a lot of conservative policies were put in place with the help of the most liberal president, President Bill Clinton. Together, they got that welfare queen business out of the business, you know. So, uh, Newt Gingrich has been there. And he, of course, knowledgeable about every subject. Media loves to surprise some of these candidates. You remember uh, Katie Couric as Sarah Palin. What newspapers do you read? <laughs> you know, I mean, the answer is like, Russia is my neighbor. You know, I see through my window. I mean, all those stupid questions. But Newt, you know, he's already been there. So Newt, understand the business of presentation. And that's sometimes is the key to any legislation. I don't think it's going to be enough. Newt Gingrich has a lot of baggage that he comes with, and right now he's riding the wave. But of you know all the baggage. I don't know that yes. we know all the baggage. I think there's more baggage back there. But Mitt Romney may have a new counter strategy to Newt Gingrich. This was discussed on all the talk shows this week. I'm sure you saw it. And here's as evidence, Parade Magazine has Mitt Romney with his wonderful, beautiful family and his wife on the cover. Why? Because he's been married 40 years to the same woman. He presumably has a pristine, clean, wonderful marriage and family life. And you compare that against Newt Gingrich, who's had uh, three marriages. And, That's uh, okay. I mean, some people just can't stay in one. You know. I, I guess, but you know, you you kind of look at the the candidate that is very. You might call him vanilla and and maybe you know uninteresting. On the other hand, he does imply stability, security, and you don't get that sense with Newt Gingrich. No, that's very true. I mean, of course, he's very, very, Mitt Romney's very, very qualified. Newt, the only time I get worried about him is he's so bright, he's so intelligent, he cannot have a vacuum. 
a time vacuum. Because if there is, if you ever gave Newt, okay, silence, he won't be able to stay silent for more than five seconds. He, I think that might hurt him at